everyone. We're talking electric aviation today for ZDNet with Greg Nichols. Uh, Greg, first of all, Happy New Year to you. Good to be with you. Hey, Happy New Year to you, Karen. Good to be Thank here. Thank you. Absolutely. You know, uh, electric aviation, something we haven't talked much about, but this was a big week uh, in terms of announcements. What's going on here? Yeah. So, you know, as, as airlines reel from the travel disruptions associated with the pandemic, uh, electric aviation is actually gaining a lot of ground, uh, and it has been for a couple of years, um, but it's just kind of a bright spot in the in the entire aviation industry right now, which is just beset with problems. Uh, so, you know, two enterprise announcements this month really underscore the growing traction that uh, electric aviation uh, technology is getting, including flying cars, which are uh, kind of here at last. Um, and, and all of this could really bring new efficiencies to air travel, especially for kind of shorter flights or short to, to uh, mid-length flights. Uh, and just to give you some perspective here, Morgan Stanley estimates that sustainable air mobility, which is kind of the, the fancy byword for this, uh, this sector, it's going to be worth 1.5 trillion by 2040. So there's a lot at stake here. And, and you can wow. see why a lot of uh, companies are really scrambling to uh, get a foothold uh, early on in the game uh, in its development phase. So the first announcement comes from California-based Archer, a company that built itself as building the uh, world's first all-electric airline around uh, electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicles. Uh, and those are really to move people uh, throughout the world's city. So we're talking about kind of shorter hops uh, with, these, with these vehicles that take off vertically and then can whisk you around in the air uh, with electric uh, propulsion, which is kind of a very cool concept. And Archer and Fiat uh, Chrysler Automobiles, FCA for short, have entered into a supply chain agreement to enable Archer to um, really access FCA's low cost supply logistics, as well as some, um, some really kind of deep know-how in uh, composites manufacturing uh, and engineering at large, which is kind of a good thing for a startup to have. Yeah, absolutely, Greg. And, and talk about the value, you know, of, the, of that supply chain agreement, the value of it to a startup. Yeah, sure. You know, that access is uh, is really critical to Archer and that kind of access would be critical to any uh, aviation startup because, uh, you know, the manufacturing components, um, doing it at scale, it, it, it's a really steep learning curve to figure that out. So leveraging the experience of, uh, you know, uh, a major multinational conglomerate that can that can bring that know how and those connections to the table is is really huge. Um, uh, you know, according to the company, um, these all electric aircraft are going to uh, be able to move uh, at distances of up to 60 miles for up to 150 miles an hour. So, so pretty quickly whisking you around. Uh, so, you know, one stumbling block for startups in aviation, uh, and this, this applies to kind of all of aviation, whether it's electric or otherwise, it's always been access to that capital efficient supply chain. Um, and, uh, you know, established durable, durable goods manufacturers really have a competitive edge because they've established that kind of supply chain. So they can, they can manufacture at scale, uh, uh, you know, cost efficiently. So um, building that kind of supply chain, it takes decades and manufacturing composites, particularly at scale is difficult under the best circumstances. You know, even, even big companies, um, uh, big car companies have had trouble figuring that out. BMW very famously kind of broke through with their composites uh, manufacturing at scale. And it was a big deal. So, you know, we're talking about cutting edge manufacturing and any startup is gonna have a lot of trouble uh, bootstrapping that. So this kind of collaboration between Archer and FCA, which I think we're gonna see a lot of in the electric aviation uh, sector at large, a lot more kind of teaming up is, is really critical uh, to, to this kind of roadmap to, to getting planes and in this case, flying cars that are all electric and uh, kind of a, a, a vision of the future here. Yeah, and it's interesting just to hear about it, you know, for, on the aviation front. We hear so much about it with, with cars, of course, but definitely a very different visual with the plane. Um, so before I let you go, though, Greg, two announcements that were made, though. What was the other one? Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, so this other company is Magni X, uh, and that it's developing technology, this company, to uh, it, which is based in the Pacific Northwest, to turn um, traditional aircraft. So, uh, um, you know, aircraft that use traditional fuels right now into electric planes. And, and those are planes that um, can hold up to 40 passengers, which um, actually accounts for quite a bit of the air travel that happens now in these kind of shorter route uh, um, scenarios. So um, the Washington State based company had recently announced that it's consolidating its operations at a brand new 40,000 foot um, building in the Pacific Northwest to aid 
this mission it has of, of uh, turning planes electric. So, you know, the, the CEO of Magniex, uh, whose name, apologies to him, because I'm going to butcher it, but I believe it's Roe Genzarski. Um, hopefully I did that okay. Uh, he, he told us, um, you know, back in 2019 when we spoke to him that, you know, 70, 75% of worldwide uh, airline flights were 1,000 miles or less in range. And that really puts all of those flights within the range of this Magniex totally electric propulsion system. Um, you know, coupled with emerging battery technologies uh, to allow a, a great deal of air flight to, to take place electronically, which are electrically, uh, via electric propulsion, which is a real game changer uh, and, and would really um, uh, kind of create a, a new face of the industry in a lot of ways and, and should become the norm if, if technology continues to develop at the pace it is right now. Um, we're kind of at the precipice of this uh, currently. Uh, in fact, Magniex is already teaming up with a, um, a local airline, Vancouver-based Harbor Air, uh, which is, uh, they build themselves as North America's largest seaplane airline. And uh, Harbor Air is working on converting its entire fleet to uh, electric aviation and using Magniex's uh, conversions, which is really cool. So uh, yeah, coupled with, um, with the Archer announcement, uh, this is just kind of indicative of all of the activity that's happening right now around uh, electric propulsion in aviation, and it's it's going to be a real game changer. We're we're really right on the cusp of uh, of seeing this take off. So it's been it's been fun to track. All right, really cool stuff there, Greg. No doubt we'll be hearing a lot more about this uh, here soon to come. Thanks so much for uh, the, telling us more about the announcements. Much more on the DNet in your full article there. Uh, we appreciate you guys uh, being with us here today.